So I was recently watering my snake plant and one thing that I noticed was that water was actually kind of pooling up on the top of the soil and not really penetrating into the soil. And I kind of figured that would happen since I really don't water my snake plant all that much. I probably watered it once every like two or three months uh, or so. Probably should do more than that, but I like kind of being low maintenance and I figure the snake plants probably do fine without that much water. But that gave me the idea for this video. What are you supposed to do when your soil starts to get really hard and doesn't take in any water? You know, water kind of just flows over it without actually getting into the soil. What are you actually supposed to do with that? And I came up with four different ways you can break up your soil and get it to absorb moisture again. So let me explain a little bit about what's happening here. Most soils are made up of peat moss. That's going to be a big portion of the soil that comes in, in your soil. And the thing about peat moss, it's really great at absorbing moisture. It can hold multiple times its own weight in water. But the funny thing is when you let peat moss get really dry up without, like you don't give any water for a long period of time, then it actually becomes hydrophobic. And what that means is actually gonna push water away. It doesn't absorb any more water. And I, I suspect that's what happened with my snake plant, the soil in my snake plant at least. I did a little bit of research into this and I think what's happening is it has something to do with the microstructure with peat particles. So peat is actually, um, it has kind of a porous structure. When water infiltrates those pores, the capillary reaction kind of pulls it in with those micropores. There's a lot of surface area there. And so it kind of draws the water in and that's why peat is really good at absorbing moisture. It just draws water into those pores. When peat is all really dried up, those pores, I think there's not enough moisture to activate the uh, water absorption abilities. There's kind of like an activation barrier that needs to be overcome in order for water to start absorbing into the peat moss. Because the thing with peat moss is that there's actually little fibers on the surface of peat moss particles that are actually hydrophobic. And if there's not enough moisture to begin with, then peat is just going to repel water. There's not enough attractive force to draw water into the into those micropores. So that's why you kind of need a little bit of water to begin with. You need to have your peat be a little bit moist if you want it to absorb even more water. And that's kind of what's happening when your soil dries up and you don't give it any water for a long time. It becomes hydrophobic and it doesn't absorb any water. But there are a few ways you can overcome that. Another factor that might be causing it is there's actually fungal and bacteria life inside of that soil. These actually play a role in retaining moisture. And if you don't water your soil enough, uh, these guys will actually start to die out. That could be why your soil isn't retra retaining as much moisture as it, as it used to, because those little fungi and the bacteria, they're not alive in there anymore to hold on to that water. And over time, when you water your plants, every watering cycle that you do a little bit of those nutrients and minerals are going to get washed away with that water and so over time the soil is going to become deprived of those nutrients i guess also because your plant is, is absorbing and incorporating that into the plant tissue when those resources get depleted then your soil is going to have a harder time retaining that water and that may be why they're a little bit more difficult to to get wet or to get moist again after watering it. The first thing you can try if you wanna get your soil to absorb moisture again, is you wanna break it up. You can grab some chopsticks, like I'm doing here in this clip, and you can just start breaking up the soil on the surface. You wanna be really careful not to go too deep, because you don't want to break up all the roots down in, down buried in, in your soil. So here I'm kind of sticking to the surface, kind of going in like maybe one or two inches at most. Being really careful not to go too deep and break up all those roots. So the reason that using chopsticks to break up the soil helps is because that kind of aerates the soil, it creates pockets of air for water to infiltrate into the soil. And so while your peat moss might still be hydrophobic, those little pockets of air will allow water to infiltrate into the soil and kind of sit there long enough for it to get into the peat moss rather than just kind of flowing over it and not giving it enough time to get absorbed into the peat moss particles. And so this is just a way you can stop your water from flowing over and around your soil and actually kind of sitting in the soil like giving it enough time to absorb into the soil. The second thing that you can try, you can try bottom watering your plant. And what I mean by that is you can get, get a tray of some sort or maybe you can use a pot that doesn't have a drainage hole. You just want to put in maybe a few inches high of water and just put your plant, 
put your plant pot into there, assuming that your plant pot has drainage holes at the bottom. So you want to put your plant pot in there and you just want to let it sit for maybe like 30 minutes or an hour and that will give the water enough time to kind of get drawn upward into the soil through those drainage holes and that dry soil is going to pull up that water from the pool of water that it's sitting in and so this is kind of similar to the first tip in that it kind of just lets water sit right next to the soil be in contact with the soil for a long period of time and just giving it enough time to overcome that activation barrier to make the soil a little bit wet so that it'll start to absorb moisture again. Just giving it a little bit more time to absorb that water. So if you're doing this, you wanna be really careful not to do it for too long because you can cause your plants to be overwatered if you do this for too long. You might get so much water that it'll actually cause your plant roots to be deprived of oxygen and start to rot as a result of that. And that's not something you wanna have happen. So if you don't wanna wait around for that long, you can just set a timer Put your plant into the into the water, set a timer for 30 minutes and walk away and just wait for that timer to buzz before coming back to your plant to take it out. Okay, the third thing you can try is to lead a hose into your plant soil and just let it drip water for, for the rest of the day. And the reason this works is by giving your plant little drops of water rather than just dumping a whole bunch of water at once and having that all flow over and pass over your soil, you're giving it a longer period of time for individual droplets to sink into the soil. Because if you're putting in one drop at a time, that drop is just gonna sit there on top of the soil before future droplets come out and push it out before it has a chance to sink into the soil. So you're just get, allowing these little drop, drops of water to sit there and sink into the soil. It's kind of like, I guess kind of the same idea as the other ones, but just in a, in a different uh, technique or application. You're just letting water have longer period of contact with the soil for that water to get absorbed into, into the soil. And the fourth thing you can try is to add compost to, to the soil. So I've seen this one mentioned more in like kind of the outdoor gardening type of circles where they have like a huge plot of land and they're just gonna dump a whole bunch of compost onto that uh, plot of dirt and letting nature do its work that way. But I think it'll still work with uh, indoor plants, but maybe it might it might not smell so good. You might smell something uh, with that compost, but it is something that'll work. And the, and the reason I think this works is because, is because it'll allow your plants to get nutrients, replenish those nutrients that might may have been depleted over time, as well as give, replenish the uh, bacteria and replenish the bacteria and fungal life that may have died off in that soil. And so this is just another technique to revitalize that soil, give it a little bit more nutrients, replenish those nutrients like it would in nature. In nature, typically the soil gets replenished by different foliage, different dead plant parts. They just kind of fall onto that soil and over time they, be, they become new soil. Um, and they, it's almost like recycling those dead nutrients, the nutrients that came from that original organic matter and just giving it back into the soil. Um, and replenishing the nutrients that way. And so you're kind of doing the same thing by putting compost into your soil. You're just giving it more nutrients, allowing that soil to revitalize itself. And so that's the fourth way you can uh, get your soil to loosen up and absorb water again. But that's pretty much it for this video. If that helped you out, if that solved your problem, let me know in the comments, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.